Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to do a little review of the Sennelier Acrel watercolors. They are made in France and um, they are, well actually the whole Sennelier line, Sennelier, I know I'm going to say it wrong several times during the video, so just accept my apologies now. Um, the Sennelier line of products are meant to mimic the pigments used in the French expression um, Impressionists. Oh my gosh, I'm off to a rock and start here today. Um, but with modern light fast pigments. So that's something you're going to notice about the range is that they're very light fast with the exception of opera. That is uh, pretty much everybody's opera is um, not light fast due to the fluorescent dye, the rhodamine dye that's included in that pigment. So that's just kind of one of those, you know, don't hold your hopes up that that's going to last color. Actually, it just doesn't, my friend Rich told me that it's just, and he's an actual falutin scientist, he told me that um, it's just the um, dye that kind of goes off, but the color remains. It just is usually a little bit darker. Unless it's just that dye that's used and nothing else, and then of course it, it goes away. But anyway, back to Sennelier. I feel so fancy saying it. Um, I was kind of decide, trying to decide between two different brands to try next because I had a lot of requests for this paint and I had a lot of requests for Schminka watercolors. And quite frankly, the Schminka watercolors just about gave me a heart attack every time I went to look at the price. And it, this special was going on and I'd been kind of hemming and hawing and thinking about it, but I was kind of afraid I would miss a deal if I didn't order. Um, so I decided to get the 12 set that comes in the long box, but it has six free pans. Now the 12 set of watercolors retails for a whopping $120 USD. And I had no intention of paying that much, but when I saw this 12 plus six set on sale for 60 bucks at jerryzardorama.com, I thought, what what the heck you know I mean granted 60 bucks isn't cheap but to be able to have 18 um, artist quality half pans I figured it was worth the risk and um, I can help you guys you know if, if I try it out it's not just for me I can help you guys decide too whether it's something you, that you can use or not I would not um, paid to do this review I don't get paid to do reviews um, but I was not given these I spent my own hard money on it so of course I really want them to be awesome because I spent my own hard money on them uh, so let's take a look at these and this palette and I want to tell you um, the first thing about the palette is I used it for a few paintings right out of the box and then this morning I actually um, check out this which is I like that they have this that's separate because you can take it out and have more palette area but I really like it because then you can rinse it in the sink and then I washed it with um, just dishwashing liquid the kind used to hand wash dishes and then I went over it with a magic eraser and it actually is generic dishwashing liquid and this is the dollar store magic erasers um, and then it really helped my paint not beat up so much and I think it always seems like with metal palettes the more you use them the better they get so just kind of keep that in mind but if you want to kind of rush them into a usable state or a better usable state then wash them with dish soap that removes any oils left over from the factory and then it um it will then when you use the magic eraser it just kind of abrades it a little bit so that your paint won't bead right up now one thing i noticed about this is that um and i've kind of bent this a little bit to try to minimize this is that they don't this this will fall down um instead of being straight out like the prima ones i can show you the prima tin i've got one i've got a couple actually <laughs> i'm gonna grab one i think this is a prima one because i also the lucas one's very similar so when you open up that it's like straight out it doesn't like tip actually it almost wants to tip forward a little bit but it's pretty much flat so I don't have to worry about my paint spilling off the edge or spilling through that little cutout and here this wants this is tipping down like if I was setting down like this the uh, the edge of that is resting on my table that said I did some mixes I didn't have it sliding out of the little um, the little dips but I did my my big wash mixes over here when I was painting I was sitting out in the bleachers painting some uh, painting at the baseball game the other day softball game oh my gosh I call it baseball my daughters just about flipped their lids but softball pardon me for living um, so I do my big washes here and then I do just small washes there uh, because like I said it's tipping so that's something to consider um, so two I did notice that if I gently and I don't know if I recommend this because this might be messing it up but if I bend the wings up a little bit it does want to pinch them a little bit tighter and I suppose I could um I don't really know if that really helps or not I suppose I could always just put like something underneath that uh, to keep it up while I'm working but I, but I just want to let you know about that 
and I do like that comes out for cleaning. And there's room for another six pans, um, which you could fill yourself or whatever. Um, so I think that the traditional colors that it comes with are probably the ones that are across the back. And then these would be the additional ones, but I'm not sure. I would always read the product description and make sure you know what you're getting. There was no pigment information on this package, so I had to go to the Sennelier website, and then they had a lovely PDF that you could print out or just copy down that had um, all the mixes. And I did notice that some of their mixes or some of their colors were unusual. They were not, um, like their sap green was different than, but there's a lot of different companies that have different sap greens. But I noticed a lot of their colors were a little bit different than what I was accustomed to. Um, um, when I'm looking at a color name. So it is important to go look at your pigments and see what you're getting. Um, one omission from this set, I feel like it really ought to have a stronger red, a stronger cool red. So what this is, I swatched out the colors and because Sennelier is famous for their glazing abilities, I wanted to do a swatch that reflected that. So what I did was I first, I just made this I just kind of made a grid and then I did a wash of each color and I um, I just added the water to the paint on the palette and then brought it over here. I didn't wet the square first so it was a pretty, um, just a pretty flat wash there and I did that for each of these colors. And then what I did was I let that dry and I went over it with another wash layer just like that, like the same consistency again, kind of the consistency of, um, of like whole milk I would say. And, and that's what you would see here. I, I did it over the, like the bottom half of each of these pal each of these swatches so that you could see one layer, two layer, one layer, two layer, one layer, two layer, and so forth and so on. And then, and I'll, you know, I'll, I'll photograph this and I'll put this on my website, the fr my blog, thefrugalcrafter.wordpress.com. So you can look at this when I post this review video there and that can help you because I want you to know what you're getting in this particular set and whether it's right for you or if something else is right for you. Um, because I'm not you. I don't know what's right for you. I don't even know if these are right for me. Um, so how the heck am I supposed to tell you if they're right for you? I don't have a clue. Um, so then I went and I did one more layer and that's what you'll see in the lower left hand corner of each of these boxes. And that is three layers, three glazes. And you can see like here in this ultramarine deep really illustrates it well, how much the color glows is much more intense with three layers versus one. Um, so if you're somebody who likes to glaze, who likes to build up slowly, then it is a wonderful option for you. And, um, and that's not something I do a lot, but it is something that I've kind of wanted to. Now, something that struck me when I was looking at this, because I didn't have the pigment information. I just, actually, these came in the mail. I had to go to a baseball game, softball game. Oh my gosh. Um, so I just grabbed my, um, I grabbed those paints. I grabbed some water brushes and some paper and out the door I went. So I didn't know any of the pigment information on these when I was doing this chart and first playing with them. And I was like, wow, that forest green, man, three layers, that looks black. Well, then when I came home and I looked on the website, well, Durfee, the first first ingredient in this paint is black, pigment black seven. Well, no kidding. Wow. I was very surprised that that was the first ingredient, but when I glaze three layers, that is black as can be. So, um, so it's important to know what's in your colors. Like the Payne's gray here is an unusual combination. This uses pigment violet 19, um, which is your pigment for carmine. There's a many quinacridone pigments that like quinacridone rose, um, quinacridone vi violet, that use that pigment and they can look very different. So you can't say, I know what pigment 19 is. It's that color because there are much more intense pigment violet 19s and more purple, more red. Um, so it's got that color, it's got that color and it's got pigment black seven. So that's different. A lot of times your Payne's gray will have ultramarine in it, which makes it very pretty because it'll have an ultramarine and then usually pigment black seven. And then it might also have some of the phthalo blue in it. But the cool thing about having the, the ultramarine blue and a granulating black is that you get a really interesting, um, texture in your shadows. So you need to know that pigment information in order to extrapolate that. And I do have to give props to my friend, Rich, the spin doctor on YouTube. YouTube. He has a lot of information on pigments and I've learned a lot um, just from our friendship online and um, I, he's there whenever I have a question about a crazy pigment that I see. A color that I really loved on this set that I didn't have, and there were several colors here that I didn't have, uh, was Naples Yellow Deep, which is PBR24 just on its own. I think it's kind of um, useful as a yellow ochre, uh, but it's cleaner. It's a, a very clean looking color and I prefer it to Naples Yellow, the regular one, which has white added. I really do not have much use for colors that have white added. That, that kind of ticks me off when they're in my sets, quite frankly. Um, 
this uh, Cenarius Blue is simply that color with white added. It's like, come on, I don't need that. I don't need white added to my colors, but that's just me personally. Please do not think less of Sennelier for doing that. That's just my, my beef. And there's white in so many pigments out there from every different company that comes along. I just personally would avoid it if I was buying the colors individually. Okay, so I think we've talked enough about these pigments here. You're probably uh, having a little siesta right now. Uh, so let's look at some artwork that I've done with this. And um, well, I'll, why don't we start off, should I start off showing you my favorite thing that I've painted with this? I also have to find my little, I, I did a landscape that I'm actually quite pleased with. Um, hold on, I'm going to go get that. There is one thing I want to, before I'm done talking about the palette here, there's one thing that is kind of cool. Um, these actually come with an overlay and when you get your palette it's going to be like this and I you can flip it around and tuck it under your palette but I found that to be very problematic when I was painting um, on the softball bleachers the other day like you can have it see it wants to spring back I don't like that so I just took it right out but it is kind of handy for you to get first familiarize yourself with what paint you have um, and I think they reckon, recommend that you can just tuck it underneath like that and just set it down um, but I like to, I, I just like to remove it, but it did help me figure out where everything is. I think I'm going to move my paints around, quite frankly. I don't like the way they're organized, but, um, but that's handy for you to have. And that's w also why it makes me think that that's probably the original colors that you'd get in the 12 set if it wasn't on the special. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, and sorry about the furnace. Uh, so that's, that's the other thing I wanted to mention, because it is kind of unique. I do kind of like that, because I guess if you were, if you had mixed colors and you didn't want them dripping in your paint, but you wanted to save the mixes, it would just be a way to keep them keep them safe so um the first thing i want to show you should we go in order of what how i painted this now i don't think so um i did this at the uh at acadia national park yesterday i was really pleased with the way it came out and the thing that and at this point when i was working with these i had been a little bit disappointed with the um with the paint and um but that's why all i brought with me to work with so i was using it but then what i realized i really loved was the fact that it made it difficult to overwork a painting because of the glazing properties of this paint and i don't know what it is because it's not like the paint when i look at the paint it's not like i look at it and say wow that's super transparent you know i don't look at this and say wow that's a really luminous paint that's really transparent it's it's kind of like well it's fine but there's nothing that knocks my socks off about this but when i was sitting on the beach and i was painting and i was taking my time the kids were swimming it's like yeah it was cold and those kids were in the water like it was the middle of august um i just had fun with it i wish i had some wax so that i could have masked out the um the uh the splashes because it was a pretty wavy day it was a uh, very very choppy um, but I really enjoyed kind of getting that impression, impressionism. I liked slapping paint down, building it up, and just, just playing with, and I didn't get mud, and I was really pleased with that. And there you can see the Naples yellow, um, in the foreground there. I mixed it with some burnt sienna or some light red, I can't remember which. Um, and I, I just had a really fun time with it, and when I was looking back at this piece, I was like, you know, that's, I think, the strongest, um, suit for these paints is when you're going to work in glazes and then um this is one i did today and this is my absolute favorite one um and if anybody's interested i will do a tutorial on this but i picked up this blue jay feather let me see if maybe you can see the cut it's hard to see the color just on its on its own i'm wondering if maybe i have it against my hand if the camera will really pick up that sheen but it's got this beautiful um bluish bluish uh, greenish blue it's almost like a neutral blue it's just such a really pretty almost like that phthalo blue color um on the edge of the feather and so i just took my time and i built up many layers and painted this and um and i think that's really the strong suit of this paint is to build up a lot of layers and and get a lot of detail there so i was really pleased with this and if anybody wants a tutorial on that let me know it would be a longer one or i'd have to speed it up because it did take me a while to paint this probably about 35 or 40 minutes so i just wanted to uh to let you know that but when i was first playing with them because i like i said i took them to the ball field with me and while the girls were practicing I was just kind of um, doodling here and uh, this is on that fluid paper not the hundred percent cotton one but the uh, the other one that's acid free in the red cover and that's another thing I was just trying out because I hadn't used that one. I just used it once or twice and um, and I wanted to give it another go um, I did that so because of the glazing I wanted to try glazing and that little water droplet came out really well I think and I just used a little exacto knife to cut out the highlights um, but again I was just kind of painting some feathers and just 
screwing around and um, did layer some colors. Like I like that, how I could kind of get some cool wet and wet effects and then just glaze over some shadows. I just thought it was kind of fun. I didn't have anything to look at, but I was just playing um, and mixing my colors and just seeing what it would do. Um, and then I sketched the girls playing here, just on the field. Um, and with that that uh, that forest green that had the black in it, you can see it really does give me a deep shadow, especially in contrast with these um, French vermilion buildings here. Um, and the leaves are just starting to turn here in Maine. So I, I really actually liked that, and I can see how that would be very useful as a convenience color in the field when you're doing um, when you're doing landscapes and whatnot. The Payne's Gray is super transparent and, and dark, especially when you layer it, and I found that very good to, to mix with other colors and to um, do shadows with. So this is before I even knew what the pigments were, because I was just kind of playing with them, and I did the... Um, I ultramarine blue and a little bit of that uh, that light red, I think, because I used the Naples yellow and the light red in the, the clay field part there. Uh, so, you know, they mixed well. I don't see a lot of granulation in the colors that I have here, but I then again, I have not done a lot of really wet and wet washes. I mean, I did work fairly wet and wet um, in the sky here, and I did have some ultramarine blue, but I, I don't see a lot of granulation. Um, but maybe they just grind it a little bit finer. I'm not sure. That could be why it layers so well. Um, and then I wanted to show, I did a did a tutorial the other day. Maybe it was yesterday. It was yesterday, but I don't know when I'm going to post this video. So we got a <laughs> theater of the mind. We're going to pretend. I don't know. Um, so I painted this. And I had done my original sketch with um, the Prima Watercolor Confections Tropical Set. And I have to say, because that's a $25 set, and this is a, for, for $12, and this is a $120 set, um, retail, both of those are the re retail prices, um, I have to say that I was a little disappointed when I was painting this, because I'm like, well, I'm using these cheap paints, and they're brighter, and I'm liking the effects, I'm getting way more here than I am there, so I was just kind of like a little, a little disappointed, um, because I am somebody who really goes for the bright colors, but I think seeing the benefits of these paints when I'm building up glazes, I think that's what I'm going to use these for, and I think you need to look at yourself and how you like to paint. Do you like to charge in with bright colors? Well, you know what? $25 Prima set is probably for you. It, are you somebody that wants to build up layers? Um, I found that I had trouble building up layers here because um, I had gone in with so much color, first of all, then nothing's really going to show up on it over pen, except for like pen, and um, and I don't know if these colors, the, the Prima ones, would be transparent enough to layer. I have not... Well, let's see. These are actually the Prima colors. Why don't I just do a little glazing there and we can see um and i did i do have a couple half pans of yarka in the middle but um let's just go in with these two reds because i was using them let's see how our glaze looks i mean i can glaze over them i don't know for some reason i guess i maybe i don't feel the control maybe i, I mean i don't know i guess you can glaze over them so i don't know you have to decide for yourself whether that is worth it for you. I think it's a good deal um, to get this set, the 18 set, for the price of 12, um, especially if you can find it inexpensively. Uh, I paid $60 USD. Um, I've heard it go for, I don't know what the euros are. Somebody was saying they paid like 40 euros, but I don't know what that is compared to, um, to USD. But I do know it's available in Europe, and a lot of our, the paints that I talk about aren't. And if you can get it at a good deal, it's a solid brand. It's fine. I don't know if it's anything to write home about, but if you are working in layers, it's really fantastic for that. I want to show you my feather again because I just really am pleased at how that came out. Um, I don't know if I would have had the patience to do that with another paint. I feel like it's very forgiving in layers. Um, those in, um, initial washes might not knock your socks off, but the layering with this paint seems to be quite superb. Um, I think that... If you like to take your time and work in layers, it's a fantastic paint for you. If you want to charge in and paint a la prima, I don't know if it's really um, if it's really the best for that. I don't think it outshines other paints in that respect. Uh, but it's certainly a fine paint. You're, there's nothing wrong with it, I guess. Um, but I would definitely give it precedence to those who like to work in layers. Um, or maybe even do color pencil on top or something. But I think that the, the layers of the paint, you can really retain a lot of detail. It doesn't seem to lift the underlying layers very well. And it does seem to retain its uh, transparency throughout the layers. And uh, that's what I think about it. If you want to share your opinion, go ahead in the comments below. If you have painted with these paints, um, let me know what you think of them. And um, 
yeah, that's about it. And if you want to see a tutorial on the leaf, let me know. Thanks so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up if you like product reviews. And until next time, happy crafting. Oh guys, I totally forgot. As promised, I want to show you the com the comparison from the uh, Sennelier swatches versus other uh, sets I have that I've swatched out. Uh, first up here is my M. Graham watercolors. They're my favorites. Um, and I do have some colors that are the same across both colors. And let's see, I've got Ultramarine. This Ultramarine Deep versus the uh, Ultramarine in M. Graham. So like the three layers of glaze equals um, kind of the Ultramarine and the one layer as I have it there. Thalo Blue, I have Thalo Blue right there. That's very similar, very comparable there to probably about two layers, one to two layers. That's a strong color anyway. Um, I don't have Naples Yellow Deep, but I have Yellow Ochre. I have Burnt Sienna, you can see the Burnt Sienna there. Um, same pigment <clears throat> and uh, burnt umber is also the same pigment so you can kind of compare those and um, I think I have a sepia too so there's the sepia my sepia and M gram is about three layers worth three layers of the um, the Sennelier but just to kind of give you give you an idea so it seems like a lot of the M grams in one layer is kind of what I would get with three layers of the Sennelier um, this is the Cotman, which is a student grade paint that's by Winsor Newton that you can find pretty much everywhere. These, um, I actually find the tones to be very similar to the Cotman. However, um, like there's the um, same pigment purple, dioxazine violet, or dioxazine purple. Um, and that's, the Cotman is about two layers of the Sennelier. Um, I'm just kind of skipping through to see what I have that are the same. Sepia. Got a sepia there, very similar. So I'm finding the tones on this to be very similar to this ivory black there. Pigments are very similar. Thalo blue, I know I have this there. Um, I think their intense blue is the thalo blue right there. PB, PV15, yep. So very similar, um, but these are a lot cheaper, the Cotman's. However, I think with the layering, I don't know if you could layer the Cotman's quite as well as a Sennelier, just because you can see where I've lifted. Almost all these colors lift really easily, so you may have a little bit of trouble, and I don't believe these these are not as as uh, transparent as the Sennelier's, I believe. So you may run into some issues glazing, but if you already have these, go ahead and try them. I mean, seriously. And if you're not going to glaze, do much glazing, you may not find this set as very useful. I don't I hate to say bad things about paint, especially paint I paid 60 bucks for, but uh, uh, but I do want you to have the have some honest um, information. So these are the Turners, and um, I'm seeing if I have any colors. Burnt Sienna, burnt, very similar. The Turner uh, line seems to be very similar to the... Um, uh, to the Sennelier. And they, it depends on how you, is the dioxazine about the same? Um, it really depends on how you, um, how you buy your paints. If you're buying like the introduction set, introductory set of turn, you can get that from between 20 to 30 bucks, depending on, of 18 colors, depending on where you buy it versus 18 colors here. I paid 64 on sale. So comparing say at Jerry's, you know, the, um, the 18 color set of the turners without a palette would be, um, usually around $30, and this with the palette is 60 so 18 colors versus 18 colors. Um, I have done a lot of layering with the Turners, and I found them to th them to be quite nice, and those are just some swatch, some mixed colors with the Turners, nice and vivid. The Holbein, I find to be about the same. Um, they're much more comparable in price to the Turners when you buy a set on like Amazon or something, but I find the colors to be quite similar. I The thing I was disappointed with um, with the Turners was the mixed pigments and like there's, I don't like white in my colors, I mentioned that earlier, and that, that, that would be very much like that color, that compost blue, compost blue would be very similar to the, um, Cinerous blue, I think I might be pronouncing that in the ballpark, so that's about like two layers of that, uh, but you know, in the same ballpark, this is Mission Gold, which I really like, I like it because they're really, really vivid, um, just kind of bringing that around, like Scarlet Lake is close to Vermilion. Um, that's a P yellow three. Their P yellow three from Mission Gold on for one layer is probably about equivalent to two layers there. I do notice three layers in that lemon. I get kind of a green tinge to it. Um, and there is a that's a cerulean, but it's PV fifteen point three, which is the same as that. So. Um, 
So kind of in between one and two layers there, just with my simple wash of, of those colors. Uh, yellow ochre and Naples are quite similar there. Um, that Perline Maroon is very close to the Alizarin Crimson that they have there. But, you know, just wanted to give you kind of a, um, a flip through to some of these other colors. These are my beloved Daniel Smiths, which I only have, um, I only have six tubes of these, but I did order a couple sticks so that I could play with those as well. They're supposed to be the exact same pigment as what's in the tubes, but here you can kind of see, um, those together. I've done some mixing. I didn't show you this either. I did a little mixing with the, um, with the uh, Sennelier's. They mixed all right. I, I don't feel like any, I don't feel like I have very many true primaries. I feel like I really am missing a really intense cool red. This uh, Carmine is just not intense enough for me and the bright red is kind of odd. Um, but I did do some mixing there. Eh, you know, I really think, I, I don't think I would mix these colors so much as I would just glaze. I did do some mixing in the feather and I will have that tutorial up for you soon. Um, I did some mixing there, but it's more glazing, I think, with these paints that you would want to focus with. Um, so maybe not as versatile. These are the, um, sonnets, the sonnet paints that are, um, like the student grade of the Yarkas. And there's some more sonnets there. I have a bigger swatch of those in here somewhere, unless I took them out to record something on them. Um, these are the core watercolors. I don't have, I don't know if I have any of the same. Ultramarine, you got Ultramarine. Um, burnt Sienna, yeah, that's the same pigment as that Burnt Sienna. So they're very, very comparable there. Uh, Doxazine, purple, uh, same pigment. I think the core is a little bit, deeper that's more like three layers but then where it got backwash it's closer to one layer this seems a little pinkier to me um no it's neither good nor bad there is the um oh you know what they use a very similar they use the same pigments in their paints gray but they have um black as a secondary color and it is the third color there they have violet as a first one in the sennelier and they have violet as a third one there but they use the same mix so that's kind of interesting um those uh the raw umber is similar to the raw sepia but the raw se warm sepia here has black added that's kind of similar the raw umber to the that is raw umber raw umber to raw umber that's stronger there in the core those are Windsor and Newton colors but I don't have a lot of Windsor and Newton artist grade so I can't really compare and I've got some oddball colors to tell you the truth I have no idea what I was thinking when I got those colors um Merrimy blue uh that's a color that's a I do like that I don't have many of their colors as you can see but I like their greens I like their sap green an awful lot it's a little different um their indigo is much like a Payne's gray that just uses pb27 which is cobalt blue and P and, and a black, I think. PB27, isn't that cobalt? No, no, I'm sorry, it's Prussian blue, Prussian blue, sorry. Um, those are some watercolor swatches. And here we have, yeah, Prussian blue is PB27. Here we have Da Vinci watercolors. These are a steal of a deal usually. And when I grabbed mine, they were huge 37 milliliter tubes, which are like the size of acrylic and oil paints. And um, uh, I got them for, I think about six bucks each and they're great for teaching classes very strong um yep there's their pv19 looks very similar to this that's a little bit darker um that's more like three layers of the carmine um vermilion two different pigments but you can get the get the idea maybe their vermilion's genuine and this vermilion vermilion is a hue um ultramarine similar there's no i don't have thalo oh yes i do they low there, very similar. PY3, yep, same pigment, sim almost the same. So, uh, so that's good, very close to Da Vinci. Those are the sonnets, these are the student grade Russian ones that I reviewed that are, they're like 20 bucks, they're crazy cheap, but I, um, I don't off the top of my head know all of the pigments, so I can't, I haven't, I gotta transcribe them. I don't have them in there yet. Um, but I just wanted to kind of give you, and I, those are aquafines, I don't like them, so I'm probably not even gonna review them because I think they're, I don't know. I, I wasn't happy, I don't like to, I don't like to slam a paint brand, but I don't, I don't really care for those. These are the Gansai Tambies. Um, actually, those are quite similar. I, I think these are a little bit bolder, a little bit brighter. Um, generally, your, your Eastern watercolors are a little more opaque, designed to work on different types of paper than we paint on. And those are just some Windsor & Newton. Oh, I do have some Windsor & Newton Artist Pans. And those, those actually seem quite similar to the Windsor & Newton Artist Pans when I hold them up, like, hue-wise. Can you see what I'm talking about? 
and that's some gouache, so I'm not going to compare those. Those are the Lucas, which are another steal of a deal. Um, the Lucas Studio and the Lucas Professional 1862 watercolors are, um, they're, they're a good deal. They are, they do tell you the opacity that the other colors don't. That's why I put the black strips, because I was like, these seem a little opaque to me. I got to look. Um, so they do have a little opacity. Nothing too crazy, but it's there. Um, I don't really notice it on white, except sometimes when I'm mixing. Like, if I was to glaze with a Lucas, I don't think I would be very happy glazing with these, but I do like glazing with these. So depending on the techniques that you enjoy imploring, those should be, that, that should influence what paint you buy. So if you like to work in opaque layers, you're going to enjoy working with gouache or even watercolors that tend to have more opacity to them, then you're going to enjoy working with transparent colors. It's your personality. It's however you like to paint. There's no right or no wrong. You can paint any way you want to. It's a free country. You go for it. Um, and I'm just trying to help you decide what is going to be a good fit for you. These are the uh, powder colors. Um, those are the Nuance by Magenta. Um, I have. I should do my brushos and my color bursts and stuff. Not that I have a ton of any of those. Well, I have quite a few color bursts. But um, these are the Dr. P.H. Martin's Hydras, which are pigment-based, light-fast paints. And, well, there's a PB15. I don't know if that's very fair of a comparison because they are, um, they are liquid and they are concentrated. So they're coming out of the bottle really, really bright. So I don't know if that's, that's a Payne's Gray there. I don't, I don't know if it's an exact, you know, good one to compare against. Oh, there's Carmine to Carmine right there. That's about like three layers, uh, of the Selenier. But there's some, just some brands to give you a, a little kind of um, apples to apples comparison in case you've got some stuff and you're wondering how this would complement it. There are some unique colors in here that I didn't have in other, um, in other brands. Like, well, a Thalo Green Light, they call that Thalo Green Light, and uh, this is called Permanent Green Light, and, um, and that one's a little more yellow. That's kind of pretty. Everyone's going to be a little different. Every manufacturer is going to have a slightly different recipe, but... Um, and that way you can kind of see how it compares to some other ones that you may have. So you can kind of, so you can kind of take something you're familiar with and apply it here and see if this is something that's going to enhance what you already have. Um, you know, I, I was a little disappointed initially with these paints, I have to say, but after doing, painting my feathers and doing some plein air with them, I think that, um, I think that I'm happy I got them. You know, they were, I'm glad I, I, I would be very, I think I would be disappointed if I paid full price for those because, um, they, they, they're nice, but they didn't give me that pow color like I'm like I'm used to, like I usually prefer. But I think that I'll add a few more colors to the palette. I probably will just use what I have, um, and then use that for plain air because I do like that. It kind of prevents me from overworking my plain air. And um, I'll just show you my little landscape again that I really enjoyed. Um, Oh, you want to see something funny? Do I have it still here? I was, <laughs> I got my, uh, I was looking at it, I'm like, I know I did a little sketch in here. There is sand stuck to it, because I was sitting on the beach, and I, and it got stuck to my uh, little sketch there. But, uh, and that's with those, uh, Sennelier watercolors. But I like that it prevented me from overworking, and I can tend to overwork a piece, especially if I'm enjoying painting it. And sometimes you just want to really get in there and spend some time on some work and it's nice to have a paint that's going to facilitate that a little easier. I don't know if I necessarily go and buy them for that purpose, but, um, but they're a decent paint and, um, if you have them, use them. And if you're thinking about buying them, now you've got a little more information to go on and there's other reviews on YouTube. Don't take my word for it. Get other people's opinions too. And, um, I'm sure you'll find the right paint for you. I like to paint feathers. It's fun. Okay. That's it. Bye. Uh, didn't mean to add an extra 13 minutes to this video, but I did want to make sure I could go through and show you that um, comparison. So thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy crafting.